Minds. We have Mikol Diseni with us. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Just finished sparring. Someone did my makeup. <laughs> but it was a fun day. We're here at the Jackson Wink Academy. So first off, from Italy, how did you make your way to Albuquerque, New Mexico? So I've been training for almost five years in Rome and I really wanted to step up my game. So since I started doing MMA, I've been following Jackson Wing social medias and it was my dream since forever to come here. So I've had a um, little bit of an argument with my first coach and problems in our gym in Rome made the gym close. So uh, I either had to decide to stop doing MMA or stepping up my game so that was a perfect chance i worked hard put some money together and came here all the way to albuquerque okay so before that when did you start martial arts was mma how you got involved yes i never did sports in my life i started at 23 24 like i was doing swimming when i was a kid and then just that never was a sporty kid never was a sporty teenager nothing like that uh, i was like doing everything else i was modeling and i never thought i would have been an athlete so one day my friend opened a, a gym and was like just come here there are like a lot of nice guys and i didn't really like to hang out with girls so it was a perfect occasion i was like okay i'm just gonna go there meet some new friends i went there i started grappling and it was really nice but i really like punching people so that's how i started doing mma it was like there was a tournament which was grappling with punches and I realized I really liked that and I won my first fight by TKO in 30 seconds so I was just like maybe I should keep training in my striking and I, keep, I should keep training my striking and I uh, started training Muay Thai and kept going with uh, Jiu Jitsu and then everything felt back into place when and in 2014, IMAF did their first world tournament in Las Vegas. So at the beginning of the year, I started training to go there and do my first Emmy tournament. And uh, I made my way to the national team and then I went competing in Vegas and that's how I started fighting in a cage. Now, how has this martial arts journey changed? Changed you, you changed your lifestyle? So, I started in 2000, I started competing in 2014, I got a bronze at Worlds and uh, being defeated was the thing that pushed me to become a real fighter. I realized I didn't like that. Like I won my first fights in Italy, but then I lost my first international fight and I was just like, no, I really want to win Worlds. So that's when my plan changed. I realized that was what I wanted to do. I realized that the cage is the place where I wanted to be and that's how my life should have been. So I kept going home, I kept training hard, I went back the second year. In 2015 I won Worlds and uh, my manager noticed me and EFC promotion noticed me and I got contracted by EFC, I got offered like a six fight contract and I realized I wanted to be a professional fighter because I've never been that proud of me since I started fighting, like since um, I started this life, I felt so proud of me and I mean, fighting is what makes me happy, training is what makes me happy and that's what I want to keep doing for as much as possible, as long as possible. Having been in that model world and it's still a business world, has that, has any of that experience helped you in transitioning over to the professional fight world? So, um, being a model is something I always did for fun, but it, I mean, I was happy of being a model, I was happy of the results I was getting, but I never felt like I worked hard for being pretty, like, I felt it was something, it was a gift I got, like, my mom made me, like, I don't know, I don't look pretty now, but I felt like my mom made me with a pretty face. So it's not something I gained. So I wanted, I wanted more. I want to work for myself. I want to put all the effort I could. So transitioning from modeling to fighting made me more proud of myself, made me feel like I was doing something to make my life better. So it changed me a lot. Fighting makes me just prouder <laughs> of myself. How would you describe uh, your in-cage fight style? I'm an aggressive, violent brawler. 
I go for the kill. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we see out of you in sparring too, right? Yes. <laughs> well, what, when was it that you found this love? Did it take some time? Was it the first class? How long did it take to feel that this was the journey that was clicking most with you? The first time my hand landed on someone knows, I felt like that was the feeling I wanted to feel as many times as possible. <laughs> and now for MMA, where are your goals at? I want to be the best. <laughs> I want to be the best version of myself. I want to go as high as possible. I want to compete in the best league in the world. I hope one day to fight at the UFC. But right now, all I want is win fight by fight, get my record better, get as many opponents as I can and keep going with my journey. And then for the question you've probably been asked 8 million times, do you have a favorite tattoo? Yes. Well, I love most of my tattoos. I mean, I have a big tattoo here on my side and I love it because it took like so much time to get it finished. But I mean, I love mostly all of them because they're like, they tell my story and they're like, you know, they're part of me. Like I got this one when I was 18 and this was me when I was 18 and as you keep checking it's like they're all evolution of my life like I was a body piercer this is a body it's like a needle for body piercing then I, this is my modeling thing and it's like a beautiful face in a mirror but it's like it's a it's the hand of a skull it's, a, it's the hand of a skeleton holding it so the skeleton looks in a mirror and see her beauty. It's like, the beauty is where you look at. It's like, the beauty is in the eyes of the person that looks at. And then I have like my fighting tattoos. It's like, my whole evolution is on my skin. My whole story is on my skin. So I love all of them, mostly all of them. There are a couple of tattoos I don't like, but I mean, errors. There are some experiences in my life I don't like, so fair enough. <laughs> So the process is, uh, is it therapeutic, putting the, the story to your skin, I guess? Yes, yes, it helps me a lot. It helps me to remember where I was, where I am, and where I have to be. So there's free space, because there's somewhere else I need to be. It's like the journey is not over. <laughs> And then for the journey, we're expecting to see you back in the cage here, hopefully soon. Yep. What would make you, you know, satisfied with your upcoming performance? You get in that cage, what shows you that you're growing? I want to get a finish. Like, I won most of my fights by decision. This time I want to finish. I'm either going to go for a TKO or a submission, but I really want to finish my fight before the bell rings. I don't want to leave it to the judges' hands to the judge's decision. I don't want it to end and having someone else deciding for me how my fight will go. I want to be the one to put a uh, full stop on my fight. Do you have a message for the supporters? Thank you very much for all the support you've been showing me on my social medias and all the emails I'm receiving, they mean the world to me. So every one of your words is truly appreciated. Keep supporting me because it means the world to me. Thank you so much. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Bye.